Hey yo folks, Quill18 here, and it is that special magical time of year again. It is better than Christmas, it's better than Easter, it's better than all the birthdays put together. It's Ludum Dare time! What, you haven't been here before? You don't know what a Ludum Dare is? Oh, let me tell you. First of all, some people say Ludum Dare, some people say Ludum Dare, some people say Ludum Dare. I don't care, I don't give a snot, neither should you. Ludum Dare is a 48-hour game programming competition. At 9 p.m. Eastern Time, there will be a theme announced. If you go to the website, ludumdare.com, and you go to that final round link, you can see the 20 themes currently up and being voted on. One of these themes will be the theme announced at 9 p.m. on Friday. Again, that is Eastern Time. There's a countdown at the top of the page. It does say Eastern Eastern Standard Time somewhere right over here, but it actually should say Eastern Daylight Time. In any case, the uh, the countdown should be accurate. So they will announce the theme, and from that point on, I will have 48 hours to make a computer game from scratch. I will be live streaming the whole thing from start to finish. Uh, the only uh, real pauses will be when I have to go to sleep on like Friday night. Saturday night, I will try to squeeze in a few hours of sleep, and then it's going to be right back to programming this game. This will be my eighth time competing. Uh, if you go to towerdive.com, load, 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 and you click on Let Them Dare Games at the top here, you can get a list of every game I have competed in so far. I started in Let Them Dare number 22, and this uh, 28 was the last one. 29 is going to be this one, and it is, like, it's a blast. I, I really... There's a part of me that has to be honest, I don't really understand why people like to watch me program this. I mean, you're watching me type code, for God's sake. How is that interesting? And yet, hundreds or thousands of people, we had 20,000 unique viewers over the course of the weekend for the last one, Ludden Dare 28. Um, and that kind of blows my mind. So, anyway come and join the fun. And by the way, if you've ever wanted to program a game, any like inclination like that, even if you think you're no good at it, just 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 make Pong. Just participate. Just do something. Now, of course, I can't start early because I don't know what the theme is. Also, it would be against the rules. And this is a competition. After, after I finish, I will submit my game and it will be judged by my peers. Everyone who competes can vote. And I'm sure some of you must be wondering, what is the prize for this insane 48-hour competition, which will draw 2,000-plus entries to the tournament? It's got to be something amazing. It's got to be something good. It is literally nothing. Literally, there's no prize whatsoever. It's entirely for the love of it, for the fun of it, for the just the pure joy of creating something um, sort of spur of the moment and having to flex your creative muscles. So go to the website and uh, do take a look at the themes that are available there. And if you've got any suggestions, make sure to post them down below in the comments. I will be sure to read those and uh, get some ideas. And if you have a chance at any point during the weekend, come and stop by. Do check out the Ludum Dare website to know when the competition will actually start because the big thing, of course, will be the announcement of the theme. Usually I start to stream uh, maybe like an hour beforehand, so probably about 8 p.m. Eastern time to uh, make sure the stream is working, to get all my software in place, to chit-chat about a few things, and all that kind of jazz. Plus, I'm just way too excited to get started. I look forward to this like crazy. They run it three times a year, and I swear to God, it's my favorite holiday ever. And uh, the only time I like missed doing the stream was for Ludum Dare 27, because I was, I was in Germany covering some uh, Paradox stuff for them. So I still participated, though. When I was flying back from Germany, I was on the plane, and I still managed to throw a little game together. It's super simple. There's not much to it. I don't think there's even any sound in it, but um, it doesn't matter. It was still I still participated, and that's all that matters. So again, even if you don't think you're... Just do something. My first game, the programming in it is so not impressive, although I'm still quite keen on it. I actually think it was a pretty good sort of psychologically themed game. Um, and that's the thing. Sometimes the theme will be, you know, maybe it will give you a hint towards mechanics like deep space. Oh, space and spaceships and asteroids and da 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 And death is useful. Make that thing where it's like kind of a puzzle game and you can kill yourself and it leaves a body behind that you can sort of jump on or something like that. You know, there's there's mechanics there. Control more than one. It's like, oh, I'll make some sort of real time strategy game where you control an army or something. But it doesn't have to be that. Some of them are, like, totally not uh, mechanical themes at all, but some you can interpret in different ways. Um, you know, control more than one doesn't literally mean you control more than one unit. Maybe it's about psychologically manipulating other people to make them do what you want, but you still only directly control one unit, you know? There's all sorts of different ways of interpreting things. 
So, um, yeah, so, you know, let them, the, the Paper Towns game, the mechanic is effectively like an item finding game, almost, sort of, uh, with a bit of a tower defense element, like, it, th 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 but it had like a bit of a story and it had real moodiness, I felt, but I, this is my first uh, uh, Unity project ever, I didn't even use Blender at any point to do 3D models, every a piece of art in this game is uh, like a primitive, like just a cube or a cylinder or something like that, that I sort of stapled together, and they kind of work. Uh, Fish Tank Commander was the only game in here that I did not do in Unity 3D, and it's also the game I get the most requests for to, like, you know, put back online and have run. It's the only game that is not currently playable because it was a web-based game uh, that was running on a Ruby on Rails server with the database backend and stuff like that. It was like, um, it was a turn-based strategy game, head-to-head -head between two players, and, um... And, at, you know, after a year or so, I just sort of stopped playing, paying for the server uh, because it was kind of silly to do. But um, people still, I still get requests for this game. The code is still available because all the program code that goes into making the games for Let Them Dare have to be posted on the website as part of the rules. So because I'm doing the competition, there's also a, uh, something called the Jam. It's 72 hours. It's the same, it's the same theme. Um, but you have an extra day, you can use teams to do it, and you don't have to do it actually from scratch, you can use pre-existing art, you don't have to release the source code, it's way more relaxed, but because I work on Mondays, uh, I don't do this one because I just, like, I have to go and work, so I don't have that opportunity, plus I really like working on my own. And also, competing with these guys is crazy because they obviously have like really good artists usually, usually really good sound guys. Sometimes they already have art assets ahead of time. It's it's pretty tough to compete with. Um, oh, the pinball game I actually think is still quite good. Uh, this Doing this pinball game for this Let Em Dare actually got me working on a bigger, more full-scale pinball game, uh, which I've talked about and demonstrated before. There's... Um, when Unity 5 comes out, and it's going to have a much better physics engine, I will probably revisit this again. Right now, there's a bit of a bottleneck in the physics side of it, so I've sort of put it on the back burner for a little while. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. The theme was, You Are the Villain. So I made Kittenzilla 3, The Return of Mecha Kittenzilla. There, there, there was no Kittenzilla 1 or 2. It just, like, I decided things sounded better to start with 3, because why not? Um, and this is great. This is like, you're playing like a giant sort of Godzilla-type monster destroying a city. It was fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, this, I felt, was the first game I'd done where I sort of like, okay, I finally start to have a grip on Unity 3D. Consider that at this point, it's been uh, about 15 months. Well, maybe 12 months, I guess. I'm, yeah. Anyway, like of working with Unity. It's been a f at least a full year of working with Unity. And finally, I, I sort of got a, a handle on it. In fact, I had so much of a handle on it that the next time around, I decided to make a multiplayer first-person shooter. The theme was minimalism, and what's more minimalist than 16 players going together on a server and blowing each other up? Uh, but I really thought that it was like the absolute minimal kind of gameplay rules that you needed to have a really interesting and competitive first-person shooter. And it's still fun. And uh, the server for this is sort of running on a free cloud thing. You can still jump into this. If you go and click the play the game here link. In fact, I bet you if you go and play it right now, when this video goes online, there'll be people playing it. Um, just because there'll probably be other people from YouTube channel and you could blow each other up. It's a little bit laggy. You know, performance is not you know, super good, but I still think it's fun to play. Yeah, and then Time Hack is the one I made on the plane. It's really not a great game, but it's a game, so who cares? And the one I did last time, Light was gargantuan. It was way too big. It's exactly what I tell people not to do when they make a game. Like, you know, the, the first person multiplayer FPS, yeah, the multiplayer FPS sounds like a big thing. And certainly the networking code took a lot of work to sort of like manipulate and tweak and do that. But other than that, there's actually like, it was not that big. It was mostly a lot of tuning and stuff. Actually, the big difficulty with this is the fact that, um, Everything I did on Friday night, I threw out. I was not happy with it. So on Saturday morning, when I got up, I started completely uh, from scratch. So it was like a really short-term project. Um, also, was this the one over the Christmas break? Yeah, I, as a result, I had about 25 hours minus breaks plus sleeping. Yeah, because like from Saturday morning to Sunday evening, plus I slept on Saturday. So I did not have the ability to put in a whole lot of time, but we still got it to do. So Lighter just had a lot of content. It's a big sort of like underground maze exploration game with lots of different puzzles in the darkness. And you only have one lighter because the theme was you only get one. And that was the only source of light. If the uh, lighter ever ran out of fuel, you're just game over. That's it. Um... Although, actually, if you died for any reason, it did restart you in the level with all your progress intact, so you could sort of keep brute forcing things, and that was fine, because I wanted people to finish. Ideally, I make a game that you can play in about five minutes, because, um, again, everyone who competes in this are also the judges, so when I go and I try a game, 
so that I can vote on it, you know, I, I dedicate something like five to 10 minutes per game. There's a lot of games to judge. I want to get a quick impression of it. And uh, certainly is what I assume other people sort of go in. They want to get, you got to catch their attention right away or else. So I try to build a game that can be played in about five-ish minutes, especially if it's a storyline kind of thing. There's no reason for me to like <clears throat> make 30 or 60 minutes worth of puzzles and story for a game that's probably not going to get see, uh, seen that much. It might be a little different for like procedural stuff or arcadey kind of games, of course, but um, for this it'll do fine. So anyway, there ended up being like way too much content and huge time pressure. Uh, it wasn't able to finish everything. There's like little traps and puzzles and things like that where there's no sound effects, for example. Um, and there's this one flying blades puzzle, which, you know, I, I felt was way too simplistic, but there's only so much I could do. But I'm still pretty happy with this. Um, you know what, I should do a little uh, run-through of the very last game that I did. I don't know what the sound levels are going to be like. I'm going to click that. It should still load. It should be on the quillyteen.com website. Go, go, go. There we go. So we'll do this. Yeah, we'll run it like this. It'll look fine. <clears throat> but anyway, it's going to be streamed twitch.tv slash quillyteen. And it is a great fun party. All right, so sound is on. Again, the game might be a little loud. It might not be. Sorry about that. I'm going to try not to talk over it because there's some voice acting. So it starts off, you've sort of like fallen down into an ancient, I don't know, catacomb or temple. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Whoa what a fall. Oh, that was a nasty step. Where the hell am I? Why is it so dark in here? Good thing I have my lighter. There's the lighter. So you can click right click to uh, toggle the lighter open and close. And if you flick the mouse wheel, it'll run the flint. Now what's interesting about it is it doesn't always light on the first go like that see there we go because you know it's a lighter so we're gonna pick a door at random i think this will bring Why me to I carry a lighter i'm not a smoker <laughs> uh oh this is gonna bring me to the chess puzzle i think it's been a while since i played this one we'll see how it goes oh no i'm doing the thing where i'm going towards the exit that's the flying blade puzzle we'll come back to that let me actually toggle the lighter a little bit here so that I don't burn through too quick. So this is the entrance room. So if I go to the right, yeah, let's do that because this will be the jumping puzzle if I recall correctly. I wonder if there's DLC for more lighter fluid. That's one of my favorite. With the jumping puzzle? Who would have ever imagined? Yeah, who would have ever imagined? Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in these legendary games is to add the sound. Uh, because a lot of these games don't have sounds, or if they do... They're just like, you know, little random beeps and bloops and stuff like that. And just to have a little bit of voice acting, I feel adds a lot of little personality. So I just voice act and I either... shoot magic missiles into the darkness. Oh, wait, it's not that kind of game, is it? <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Um, sound, something. Oh yeah, and then I voice pitch up or down, just like mix it up based on the, you know, the game. So here I've got a deeper voice kind of guy. So... <laughs> Be some more. Oh, one of these would make a great Christmas present for my mom, as long as there's nothing bad inside. Right, so if you come close to these, it'll start to shake just a little. The closer you get, this the more... This starting to feel lighter. It'll start to shake a little bit more, and I can even knock it over myself by clicking on it, and it'll release a spider! No! Oh, I went the wrong, wrong way, so I'm being attacked by the spider. Oh, don't back into the other freaking things. Okay, eventually it'll die. It's got the red eyes. There we go. Now, one of these, if you approach it, will not shake. There we go. And that's the thing. This game does have a lot of, like, somewhat harder puzzles that way. It's not necessarily obvious. I can never remember. Am I supposed to stick to the right wall or to the left? It's all in the timing. Classic traps here. Leap over that. Don't get thwomped. I'm going to run out of uh, lighter fluid here and die. Because I'm spending too much time talking. Game was probably like too hard. The puzzles weren't explained enough or foreshadowed enough, which is really a shame. Like there, there are a lot of issues with this game, but there is a lot of content. Two days to make like something that would have blown people away like ten years Do ago. Do I have feet? Do I have feet? No, I don't have feet. Why would you even ask about that? Get on the pressure plate. Oh yes. Oh yeah, this looks like it's up to code. This is, like, the worst place to run out of light. Well, actually, anywhere you run out of light is bad because there mm -hmm. is... You just, just die. Why the, the hell did I decide to, to walk across this thing? Fuel. Two voices playing at the same time. You know, little little glitches like that. Some of the textures here override a little because I was just why going... Why do I even carry a lighter? I'm not a smoker. Well, I can save my lighter here. 
Whoa, watch that first step. Yeah, there's a crack. All right, I think you go vroom, forward. Vroom. Right. No, that was wrong. Forward. Vroom. Forward vroom. that way. Uh, into the middle. Vroom. And then right. Vroom. Oh, I see a light. Uh, no, never mind, I don't. And then the lights go out. She's like, screw you. And then the puzzle board goes away, so you gotta make your way to the exit. Oh, man. This lighter's about to go. Whoa, Next watch that first step! Next thing, we've got a giant spider to deal with. With almost no lighter fluid. Excellent. This is, yeah, like that. Uh, so we gotta kite it around. Oh, God. And of course, there's no cell phone reception here. Oh, the one not... What is the spider even eating to get this big? Not pitch-shifted voice. Alright, so there's a cell over here. I can kite this guy into here, and then... Hit the switch. <clears throat> Lock the spider in there. It'll keep staring at you, too. <laughs> Which I love. Alright. Okay, be... how am I gonna get the spider off my tail? I've already done that. I gotta sure. trap it somehow. So now I can get the door to open up. I'll just close that for a second. Because the door Lumos. opens up really slowly. Well, it was worth a try. Yeah. Okay, yeah, my lighter's definitely running low. Oh, what the hell, what the hell, what the hell? The hall of cubes. And little gaps in the floor. Urgh. So I gotta sort of get through here. Oh, this looks like something straight out of Indiana Jones. It sure does. Including the giant boulder of death that's gonna come and crush us. Oh, God, I'm stuck. Oh, no, there was a box. And I left the tombstone. But I do have the three keys. And now, you don't lose the keys when you respawn, just as a gentleness thing. So now, actually, assuming I can pick the right way, which is not that. And I wish there had been more indicators in this room to give you a sense of direction as well. Uh, there we go. This is the right way. I'm going to go this way and that way into the room of the flinging blades. This place just keeps getting better and better. Like this. Whoop. Why do I even carry a lighter? I'm not a smoker. Oh, I got hit by one. All right, we got a few hit points, and then we'll go and finish the game. So again, too much content, um, and it left it meant that there wasn't enough sort of like polish. Look on the bright side. At least this room isn't completely dark. So there's like lava down there. So let's not fall down. Big giant lock. That's the biggest lock I've ever seen, and it looks like it needs three keys. I've got three I keys. I wonder if there's DLC for more lighter fluid. Oh. You know, after all that, I expected something more. Yeah, and that's it. Didn't have enough time to actually do, like, a proper you end know, screen. after all that, I expected something more. But at least there's something. So anyway, there was, that was lighter. Hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you join us in the uh, you live know, stream. after all that, because, I shush expected you. something more. Because I think it's going to be really, really, really fun, and who knows what kind of game we're going to make this time. See you there. Bye-bye.